Hello, my friends. How are you? Welcome to the Jazz Real Book. I am your host, Jay Sweet. Today's track is a historic one. It is all blues from Miles Davis. Let's get into it. All right, so let's learn a little bit about Miles Davis, certainly a style innovator and one of the greatest of all time. Miles Davis was born in Alton, Illinois in 1926. He grew up in a musically inclined family. At nine, he received his first trumpet, developing a unique tone under teacher Elwood Buchanan's guidance. After moving to St. Louis in 1941, Miles Davis immersed himself in the local jazz scene, playing in school ensembles and with territory groups. In 1944, Davis joined the Billy Eckstein Orchestra for a summer stint alongside jazz legends like Charlie Parker and Dizzy Gillespie. Despite briefly attending Juilliard, his passion for New York's jazz scene led him to drop out of the esteemed institution after three semesters. By 1945, Davis established himself as a top trumpeter in New York playing with various musicians, including his own sextet. Later in 1945, Miles Davis was asked to replace Dizzy Gillespie in the Charlie Parker Quintet. Now, Davis was not as technical of a player as Gillespie. He was a very fine trumpeter, but really didn't play Uh, truly in that bebop style in the same way Gillespie could. So in order to separate himself from the comparisons between him and Gillespie, he developed a unique sound characterized by space, texture, and the use of a mute. Davis's collaboration with Parker resulted in recordings as a leader with the Miles Davis All-Stars in 1947. That record featured early compositions and showcased Parker on the tenor saxophone and not on the more familiar alto saxophone. In the early 1950s, Miles Davis faced heroin struggles like many jazz musicians of his time. And this led to a public downward spiral. He made a remarkable comeback in 1954 after quitting Cold Turkey And at this time, he shifted his playing style to incorporate even more space and direction. He also formed his famed first great quintet, which included, at times, John Coltrane on tenor sax, Red Garland on piano, Paul Chambers on bass, and Philly Joe Jones on drums. The group was formed in 1955 and recorded classics until about 1959. Also, Davis explored cool music, more cool orchestrated music with arranger and composer Gil Evans. In the early 1960s, Miles Davis grappled with lineup instability until forming a new quintet in 1963, which eventually featured Young talents like Wayne Shorter on saxophone, Herbie Hancock on piano, Ron Carter on bass, and Tony Williams on drums. The second great quintet, initiated in 1964, explored elements of free jazz, but still maintained defined structures and mostly played original compositions. This lineup remained intact until Miles Davis took another musical shift when he began to experiment with electric music in 1969. So, once again, Miles Davis changed the direction of jazz with his album, Bitches Brew, in 1969. The record blended rock rhythms and electric instruments. A hiatus in the early 1980s proceeded with his return and a new sound that influenced the emergence of pop jazz. So, Miles Davis's legacy as a jazz innovator persisted until his passing in 1991. Davis left an incredible mark on American music history. His diverse contributions across jazz movements showcased 
his consistent ability to reshape the jazz genre. For more on Miles Davis, check out my podcast on 30 albums for 30 years, 1964 through 1994, season number two, uh, episode number 19. And we do a review of Miles Davis's album ESP and also my interview uh, with the great Ron Carter, who was a member of Miles Davis's second great quintet. All right, let's learn a little bit about the tune, All Blues. Okay, so now we get to the For the Jazz Nerd section. I would give this one a standards rating of 9 of 10 and a difficulty rating of 3 of 10. All Blues is a song you would often hear called at a jazz jam session. As for its construction, All Blues is based on a standard 12-bar blues chord structure in the key of G. 12-bar blues is the most common chord sequence in all of jazz and, of course, in blues music as well. It's a repeated 12-bar chord sequence. The chord sequence's only unique change to the standard 12-bar blues format is in its turnaround in measure number 10, where it moves to a flat 6 chord, that's an E flat 7 chord for 3 beats, and then to the D7 chord, the 5 chord, before resolving to G7 in measures 11 and 12, and then the whole thing repeats. This new turnaround replaces the expected C7 chord, the 4 chord, that is most common in blues. So there's a slight change in the way the chords are structured. Also, a 6-8 rhythm is not typical for most 12-bar blues. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. You'll hear that rhythm throughout or underlying. Also crucial to the overall composition and feel of the tune is this repetitive bass figure that continues throughout. The figure creates an almost hypnotic type of effect. The song also has a written and repeated four-bar intro, and the melody does not incorporate any repeated materials. And there you have a little bit more on All Blues. <laughs> 